Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to Sandown Brabus Guildford, I will be taking you on an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of this 2019 Brabus 800 Widestar. Sandown Brabus and Sandown Mercedes Guildford currently have this as well as many other high specification cars for sale, and all of their contact details can be found in the description of the video. Brabus works with Mercedes to create even more powerful and aggressive versions of some of their already thunderous AMG models, but Brabus power and aesthetic upgrades can also be applied to non-AMG Mercedes models. There are several different Brabus 800 models of the new G63, this 800 Widestar, 800 Black Ops, 800 Shadow and the G850, with an even more extreme G900 V12 coming soon. Before we go into the astonishing output and performance of the 800 Widestar, let me remind you of the 2019 G63's dimensions and weight. The standard 2019 G63 is 4,874mm long, 2,189mm wide, 1,965mm high, and has a curb weight of 2,649kg. We can now move to the 800's engine, but keep those figures in mind. To view the engine bay, we need to enter the driver's side and pull the red lever found in the footwell. We can then move around to the front and depress the catch, before lifting the bonnet up and self-supporting it on two struts. The engine now comes with a new carbon and red engine cover, and gold bill plaque to the right. With the Power Extra 800 upgrade, Brabus take the Mercedes twin turbo 4 litre engine that powers the G63 and many other AMG models, remove the standard turbos and replace them with higher performance versions. This is then remapped and tuned to produce 789 brake horsepower and 1000 Nm of torque. That's an increase of 212 brake horsepower and 150 Nm of torque. This enhanced output produces a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 4.1 seconds with an electrically limited top speed of 149 miles per hour or 240 km per hour. That's a decrease of 0.4 seconds to 62 miles per hour and equal top speed as long as the optional driver's pack has been specced in the standard G63 as without it, it is limited to 137 miles per hour. Once finished in the engine bay, we can firmly pull the bonnet down and secure it. This 800 is sitting on new 23-inch Platinum Edition Monoblock F alloys at each corner with new Brabus dust caps. Moving to braking, I believe the Wide Star is fitted with the 398mm front and 370mm rear drilled and ventilated disc from the G63, although the calipers do say Brabus, so this may indicate a change. No additional suspension was listed by Brabus for the Wide Star, so I believe this comes with the front double wishbones and rear longitudinal and transverse links, both with coil springs from the G63. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the exterior in-depth tour from front to back. This 800 has been enhanced by the addition of a wide star front bumper and new radiator grille that allows more air to flow in than before. On each side of this there are new LED strips below and more open side intakes. This central intake now extends further outwards, facilitating enhanced airflow and creating a more aggressive aesthetic. Moving up, this intake existed in the standard car, but has been brought forward to complement the larger bumper. Above this, the grille remains the same, but a Brabus B has replaced the TriStar. The front camera for the Park Assist system sits above. The new circular, LED daytime running lights and iconic arch top indicators are either side of the grille. Moving up to the bonnet, we find this new Brabus carbon fibre bonnet attachment. Just like with the bumper, it helps to create a more aggressive aesthetic, but unless the front vent is open, I don't think it's functional. These intake bulges run back close to the rear, and indentations run along the sides. Moving back, we come to the iconic G63 upright windscreen, but with a new carbon strip with LED arrays on either side attached above. Moving to the sides, the front wheel arches have been extended at the front by the new bumper, and also at the rear thanks to new components. There's a new, large faux air vent with illuminating Brabus text between the vents, and new model designation just long from this. Moving down, Brabus have also installed new side skirt illumination at the front and rear. I believe the extended side skirt from the standard G63 remains, and above, the standard wing mirrors with their integrated indicators and cameras underneath for the park assist system. Moving along from these we come to the fuel tank flap, here on the right. It is opened by first unlocking the car and then depressing it, as it is otherwise also locked. The G63's fuel tank has a max capacity of 120 litres, and returns a combined MPG of 14. I can only imagine this is reduced in the 800 Widestar. Moving back down, we come to the new Brabus stainless steel valve controlled exhaust system that we'll hear a bit later. These end pipes are noticeably larger and more angular than those in the stock system, with bees engraved onto the top. Moving back up to the side skirt, we come to the new rear side skirt illumination. Just as with the front arches, the rears have also been enhanced with these new faux air vents. 
Moving up, there's a new full-width roof spoiler with Brabus branding. It is quite a significant structure, so I imagine it will have some functionality in addition to form. Below, there's a new Brabus carbon fibre spare wheel cover, and finally, a new rear bumper with significantly enhanced grilled vents. Let's hear how the 800 wide stars exhaust sounds, first with the valves closed and then with them open. Now we've finished the exterior tour, we can move inside. The 800 Wide Star comes with a standard G63 key, but with a new Brabus case. It offers controls for lock and unlock. There's also a new fob for the car's optional auxiliary heater. Moving inside, the iconic G63 handles do need a little force to open, but the doors swing open easily. Brabus offers a significant amount of customization for the interior, including colors, materials, and quilting styles. But here the inside is finished in black leather with the standard stitching. We can now start the interior in-depth tour with the doors. Starting at the top of the doors, we first find these new aluminium Brabus door lock pins. Then controls for all of the windows and electric mirrors, lock and unlock and seat heating memory and movement. Under this is the integrated aluminium handle and quilted leather panel. Moving down, we find more aluminium and the first carbon insert, door release and first Burmeister speaker from the HD system. And finally, the open storage area and second speaker. When we open the door, we can observe a few new features. Firstly, the new LEDs to the front and rear light up. Secondly, the Brabus logo to the rear of the new front wheel arches illuminates. And thirdly, the illuminated kick plate transitions through colours. Taking a closer look at this area, the G63 logo that was here has been replaced by this genuine Brabus plaque, the new Brabus illuminated kick plate, new aluminium pedals and branded floor mats. Then moving up, the parking brake, exterior light controls and first manually adjustable air vent. Moving to the left, we come to the new Brabus carbon steering wheel, although a carbon AMG version can also be spec'd in the standard G63. This starts with the contrast 12 o'clock marker and carbon at the top. Alcantara at the 9 and 3 grip positions, with standard buttons for the screen to the left, calls and voice commands to the left. Controls for the screen ahead, cruise control and lane tracking to the right, with further carbon below and Brabus branding. Behind we find new aluminium Brabus shift paddles, which are much larger than the standard. These can be used to manually change the gears of the 9-speed dual-clutch transmission. The car is started in the same way as before, by depressing the button to the left. The digital screen ahead is part of the new Mercedes extended cockpit that is made from two 12.3 inch displays. The screen options ahead start with boost and oil and engine temp, then drive configuration, g-force and lap timer, and real-time BHP and torque usage. The other side of the screen displays the same info, plus from start trip and fuel gauge, sat nav and time and date, temperatures and tyre pressure and g-meter. There are also additional screens for service schedule and info, assistance info such as lane tracking, ANG performance, the trip including eco display, navigation, radio for the DAB digital radio, media for device connectivity and phone for calls and messages. Finally, the user has the ability to choose between three display options, sport, classic and progressive. The main screen to the left shows many of these options, and others, but present them in more detail. Navigation, radio, media, telephone, in-car office, MB Connect, vehicle and system. For more information on these screens, please view my 2019 G63 in-depth tour. Moving down from this, we come to the newly designed G63 central column, starting with these vents and diff controls centrally. Ventilation and heating controls are below, with direct access buttons, the IWC clock, and hazard lights at the bottom of this section. The flat section of the central column is finished in gloss carbon here, and starts with two concealed cup holders. Behind this is the main control array, drive mode selection, transmission, suspension and traction. 
main scroll wheel and trackpad behind, volume control, exhaust valve control, reversing camera system, and low range for optimized off-road driving. Continuing back, we come to this padded armrest that also serves as the lid for the central storage area. It can be opened by depressing the button ahead of it. Inside, we find a large amount of storage space and USB and AUX inputs. Once finished in this area, we can easily close the lids. On either side, we find the standard G63 seats with both heating and ventilation options and extra padded headrests. With Brabus, these can be upholstered in a variety of materials with varying finishes. As seen earlier, all movement controls are found to the respective doors. Now we've finished in the front, we can move to the rear. Upon opening the door, we once again find the new colour-changing Brabus kick plate. The rear bench is comprised of two full seats, either side of a central occasional seat, that we will look at in more detail later. Now sitting inside, unsurprisingly there is quite a lot of legroom. To the rear of the front seats are wallet type storage areas, zone climate control centrally and Brabus floor mats below. The central climate controls now come with a digital screen and the ability to alter both temperature and fan speed and fan direction. The 64 colour ambient lighting system from the G63's premium pack is installed here and extends to the rear. Moving around to the seats, the rear of the central occasional seat pulls down to reveal two cup holders. Now we've finished in the rear we can move to the boot. I believe its capacity of 454 litres with the seats up and 1941 litres with them folded down is unchanged. However, there's new quilted leather on the door, a new colour changing entry plate, new Brabus mats, netting to the left, Burmeister sub above and divider centrally. So that concludes my in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust video of this 2019 Brabus 800 Widestar that's for sale with Sandown Brabus at the time of publishing. All of their contact details are in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.